I apologize for that, guys. What happened? How come there's nobody in here? And we're... <sighs> so shitty. Hold on, I'm just gonna switch the server and come back in. Alright, we'll wait for you. Oh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. So we're not getting to lose any action. Woo -woo. And I, got... I mean, we won the first game. Oh, you already won the first one? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so just start up. So let's take a look at Miss Poisonita right here. He's running the Fire Weaver, I believe. Yeah, with Rune of the End dead. The Sword Focus. Yeah, no, Water Fire Arcane. Ooh, interesting. Water Arcane. Oh, ooh, interesting, interesting. We got the power of Mirage over here. Dueling and Domination. Ooh. Torch, Axe, and Two-Handed. Okay. We didn't get to see the first match, unfortunately, which is kind of shitty. But here we go. Let's see what... I'm going to keep an eye on Hypnos for this one. They're already hard focusing on to Gip. Trying to get the damage. Really good port on Gip, though. Coming right back up onto the Condi Mirage. He's super susceptible to Condi, so it's a really good target for them. He's not able to get those uh, big stacks on top of him off. And down goes Hypnosis. Really good targeting by Gip. Able to separate the two really quickly. Going down to the bottom tier, getting them to chase, and then porting back up where uh, Hypnosis was all by himself. So he's able to get the easy 1v1 and able to get him down. Now Poisonita's got a lot of Poisonita. <laughs> it's quite uh, ironic that Poisonita has all the poisons on top of them. So that was a quick win. That was our third match in the first round, and I actually didn't go to a game three. Kind of sad about that, but Alex and Control Freak end up moving forward. Our next match is uh, Red Avenged and Noir versus Rangar and uh, Corin Tamor. I don't know who that is. Ragnar and Corin Tamor. I know Ragnar, that's for sure. Ragnar and Corin versus. Noir and Red Avenged. What was that? Noir and Red Avenged. Once again, guys, I'll take this time to shamelessly promote. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of stuff, click that follow, click that subscribe. I do this every single day. If you take a look at my highlights, you'll see all of the events that I run. So there's Hitzer already. Let's take a quick look over here at his build. He's running with ooh, support uh, mag hybrid, kind of. This does look like kind of like a hybrid build for sure. He's got Mender with the Rune of the Traveler. He's got Sword with Focus, Axe, and Shield. He's running Zeal, Honor, and Firebrand. And we got River Phoenix, Blood, going <laughs> Spite, Soul Reaping, and, and uh, Reaper. Interesting, Reaper. Ooh, and he's got this bad boy over there. Oh, sorry guys, we're going to need someone to leave the server, so if anybody can leave, if you're not participating, and if you're just spectating, I would ask you to leave if possible. I am streaming it, so you can see it there. If you are not participating, I will kindly ask you to leave, to allow participants. Oh, he's in, so never mind. Let me just make sure that's him. I don't like people coming in. There's a lot of imposters that come in here. That is Noire. So let's take a quiz. Hitzer usually does run a Condi Thief and a pretty nasty one at that. Carry on with the Rune of the Adventure. He's running Sword Dagger with his short bow. Let's take Honky over here. He's probably running a regular Tools Hollow. Yeah, it looks like your regular Tools Hollow. Let's see who he's going to engage on this one. They're going for Hitzer right away. River and the Guardian. They they have a lot of damage, and that's what Hitzer is going to be careful for. Oof, oof, oof. Bad Lich for him on that one. He ended up eating a lot of Condi and not even being able to clear it. I knew the Guardian wasn't able to support him on top. He's got a lot of stacks of Condis, and down he goes quite quickly. So that's Hitzer and uh, Noire that end up taking it. They're one of the more dominant peoples. Let me see if the stream died, guys. Let me just take a quick look here at my stream. No, it seems to be good, but it was actually me who had ended up getting kicked out of the uh, the game for some reason. I don't know why it's been doing that for the past week or two. It's been just kicking me out randomly for no reason. And I'm like, Psh. I did a Guild Wars 2 repair the other day, and even still, it doesn't work. So this is still the first round of our quarter of our first round of our uh, 2v2 event, guys. 
in the quarterfinals. It should be a lot more tougher, tougher competitions. I'm curious to see the semifinals. We are going to have a third place match as well. There's 300 gold that we're going to be giving out in this one. 50% to first, 30% to second, and 20% to third. So here we go again. Let's see if River Phoenix falls for the same mistake. He's got to be very careful in that Lich form not to take those big stacks of Condi. And his Guardian's got to be a little more attentive and make sure that he's able to clear and stick to him as much as he can. And it's those main two engages that you really got to... Oof. Oof. They ended up bombing him really hard. The Guardian's nowhere to be seen. Really far away. Ended up completely 2v1ing. And that was great separation coming out from the blue team. Kind of focusing and honing in on their target and getting rid of the other ones so they can kind of just cleave away at their own free will without having to be bothered by the Guardian coming in for the support. Putting on that Aegis or those blocks or those heals or those cleanses. And he ends up taking that one pretty swiftly and handedly. So that's actually a Red Avenged and Noire that take it. Next up is going to be another two uh, free agent teams. So it's going to be Abyss and Lime versus Myalak and Cardox. So my substitutes, please be ready. I might not have these guys in here. So it's Abyss. My short-term memory is fucking wretched, guys. <laughs> Literally. So it's Abyss and Lime versus Malak and Cardox. Line versus Myalak and again I forgot. God Zooks, Cardox, Cardox, Cardox. Short term memory is five, what is that, three to five seconds? So it's like if you kind of put your keys down on the table and then turn away, you're gonna forget that's three to five seconds and my short term memory is shot. So who we have here, so this is these two free agent teams, that's the line, ooh, nice Goblin Slayer, there he is. Let me make sure that's who I want, yeah, Cardox and my Alak, that's fucking incredible guys, and like I said, the more I do these, the more people understand how they go and they take them seriously, it's not some kind of little uh, gimmick that I put on. So as you can see, these are both free agents, uh, both free agent teams, so four of them do not know each other, and they both showed up and they both entered, they both were, came in when they were called. Everybody's participating really good. There's no BM. I want to be have this stream just be PMA as much as it can. I don't want any more like bashing of the, uh, just bashing in general, you know, new players or the game itself. You know, let's just play it the way it's supposed to be played. Let's have the most fun we can. And hopefully we can build the community and make this game a little better, you know, without that negative uh, atmosphere floating around everywhere. Let's just have some fun. And that's exactly what we're trying to do today. And I really appreciate you guys coming out today and joining us for this. Let's take a quick look at Goblin Slayer. Ooh, Radiance Valor. He's actually running a, ooh, a burn card. Interesting, 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 interesting. Let's take a quick look at Myalak. Is he running? No, he's running your classic uh, Strength, Discipline, and Spellbreaker. Myalak getting heavy pressure, trying to get the big worldly impact. He's going for the dip. Oof, big prime light beam. He's able to break the stun immediately from that. He's getting heavy pressure, and I'm surprised that they're going for uh, Myalak. He goes into his rampage to try to mitigate some more damage. Big stomp and rock throw. Oof, he doesn't almost gets it down. The elixir has literally saved his life. Beautiful dodge on that one. Literally saved his life once again. He gets the big whirlwind to get him down. And Goblin Slayer is sitting in a really pretty position, and I'm surprised that they actually went for uh, Myalak first, considering he has a lot more sustain than the uh, than the uh, the guard, and especially considering that the burn guard. Well, now that they know he's a burn guard, they're probably going to pay a little more attention to him because his stacks can get up really high, and if you're not attentive on that, he will annihilate you. The Condi, uh, the Hollow Smith, isn't very good at Condi clear. He is very susceptible to it. I don't believe he was running Elixir C in any way. I do know that he does have the uh, the rune to... Uh, let's see if he's running with cleansing as well. This is the best of three, guys. And as I mentioned, the class you start with is the class you finish with. And as well, uh, there's no class stacking. And no Condi Mirage. <laughs> Those are the only rules I have. Other than that, you can go from... Uh, Dragon Hunter to Firebrand to a Core Guard. You can change all your traits, your weapons, your runes, your utilities, your amulets. Everything, everything, everything. He doesn't have cleansing, but he is running Ruin of Leadership, and he does have the healing turret over here. But other than that, he doesn't have much in the way of cleansing. So here we go into game two. Let me take a quick look at uh, the line over here. 
Very interesting. He's got a long bow now. I don't know if he had... Oh, this is the ranger. Excuse me. I'm going to keep an eye on Goblin Slayer over here and watch his burning stacks to see what he was able to accomplish on that. My computer is stroking out because I'm not getting any sound at all and everything just seems... There's a problem whether it's the Spotify or YouTube, whatever. Oh no, solid. Goblin doing a really good job. I like this outfit too that they came out with, man. Super epic. Looks like Raiden from Mortal Kombat. I'm trying to get the big damage on top of him. My Alec just trying to get any big, big damage. But Zion's taking, the, getting the better of the exchange, actually, my Alec, on this one. Whirling Defense coming up. Goblin Slayer doing a really good job of avoiding that. Oof, oof. Double down on the Rampage. Huge, huge, huge damage coming out from, uh, I believe that's my Alec and uh, Goblin Slayer. They end up taking this one. Really good job by that. That is another free agent team, guys. And now we're finally moving into our uh, quarterfinals. So it's my Alec that moves forward. Oh, so here's our next match. Naru and Helio versus Onlil and Louis PTM. And I really like these guys entering into my tournaments. It gives uh, people a chance to fight these guys when they don't really naturally fight them. and kind of test their might and test their grit and see what they're made of. And a couple times I've actually seen them lose in the 2v2s. In really stunning fashion. So I like to... Uh, when they're together, though, right? Uh, no, I think they've lost together, yeah. I think they've lost. I'm not entirely sure, but they have. And to all those people say, oh, you know, it's useless. So they're going to just kill me. They're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. Not necessarily, guys. You just got to have that hope. Hold on to that hope, man. My light back there is kind of fucking up on me. So it's Onlil and Louis PTM. Versus Naru and Helio. So Naru and Helio versus Onlil and Louis PTM. I'm curious to see what Naru and Helio are going to be running for this one. He's coming <laughs> running on Captain Yar. So that's his uh, regular tools hollow. Naru shouldn't be too far behind. He is over there. Yeah, he's running with Demolisher, Rune of Leadership, and he's also got his rifle, Sigil of Intelligence and Energy. He's running, yeah, Alchemy Tools and Hollow Smith. Let's take a quick look at Duke Metatron over here. This is the free agent team that actually did quite well. And I put, yep. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm just letting know, uh, Goblin Slayer, letting him know that he can swap anything he so chooses. He just has to stay on his class. I do post the rules for a good 15 minutes beforehand, but maybe he didn't see them and maybe he wasn't able to enter because the server was really full at the beginning. And as you mentioned, we have 13 teams in this tournament so far, so it's uh, pretty intense. Oh yeah, guys, and as well, I made a, uh, I finally officially made the website for our Guild Wars 2 1v1 Tournament League. If you look uh, below my video or below the stream, you'll see Guild Wars 2 League and there's a link to the website. I actually created that uh, maybe yesterday. I did have like a little bracket inside the Twitch that kind of looked a little low budget and shitty and nobody really understood it. So I was like, fuck it, you know what, I'll make a, a little website so it's a little more legitimate and actually people can go there and actually see it. And it looks like it's kind of made by Guild Wars 2, but you can see the ghetto-ness a bit <laughs> because I made it. But at least it's the start. And I'm going to take, if you guys have any suggestions or something you'd like to see in the website or something that could be improved, there's it's still in the beta version. When I start the season next, when the next rank season starts, is when I'm going to start the official season. So all the little details should be ironed out and all the little kinks should be uh, taken care of. So really good pressure. Oof, Naru and Healy going really quick at him. But really good job trying to put the counter pressure. He goes in for the renewed focus to try to mitigate a lot of that damage coming out from Helio. Good job from these two so far. Keeping the heavy pressure onto Naru. Good, good cleave. Duke Metatron ends up going down. He is the firebrand, the uh, the core guard. He doesn't have that much sustain. But also, look at that, how we're able to bring him down to 30%. There was a potential to get the big burst. Very, very impressive. Very impressive considering the players that you're going against. One of the top, top, top tier players of this game. Helio and Naru. Good job by you, the Compassion and Duke Metatron. Very impressive so far, guys. And we still got us a game two. They can't get too complacent. They just got to be able to burst that and maybe bait Naru out of using a couple of his cooldowns before they go in full, full ham. Oh, yeah, and I'm actually calling the season um, Code Red Revival. That's what I'm calling this, the season coming up. 
because the PvP is in that Code Red situation, and we're going to try to revive it, guys. So it's called Code Red Revival. If you open up the website, you'll see it right away. Code Red Revival. You'll see the rosters, the leaderboards, uh, how to join the league. And the main way to join the league is just to participate in the uh, 1v1s and 2v2s. If you participated in a minimum of three of my tournaments, I will automatically have you eligible to enter. But right now, I'm only going to do the top 15 or the top 20 that I'm going to put into the bracket. It's just too much information to constantly keep track of. But I always keep track of everything, but it's too much information to put down into the website. So the top 20 are the only ones I truly consider into the, uh, to the uh, bracket. So the more you play and the more win, wins you get, the higher potential you are to be in that top 20. So we're just waiting for, uh, I believe it's his partner. It's a Duke Metatron. Yeah, he is there. So he has entered back in. Let me see if he's made any changes. Maybe he went to go take a quick peek at what Naru and Helio were running. He's got Radiance, Valor, and Virtues. Still running the same. I think it was Vampirism before and Marauder. Maybe not Marauder. He does look like he switched. I think he was running with Carry On or something that was Condi on the other hand. He was running Barbarian. Oh, yeah. I thought he was Condi for some odd reason. No, that was the other dude I believe that was Condi. Yeah, that was the other dude that was the other free agent that I believe that was Condi. And I hate when it kicks me out of the match. Now, when I go to do my stream, it's going to be, it's going to cut my stream in half. So now I got to make two parts for the video. But as soon as I end this, guys, I'm going to put the video into my highlights so you can see that. And it's pretty interesting to see how many people go back to watch their own play and then they'll clip good highlights of what they did. Very, very interesting. And it kind of makes me feel happy that Bye. people are. Yep. There we go. Hey, Goran, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's up? Not much. I'm in, actually in here with uh, Space Pen, Goran, and Arkansas uh, uh, Arkansas Alex. There's usually always in here with me. I'm gonna turn you down just a bit, Gore. So here we go with Duke Metatron. They're kind of sitting back. Need to reset it. Um, yeah. Reset. Because he fancy got kicked out of the thing for a second when the match is starting. Resetting. It's okay, guys. Uh, they didn't attack each other, and nobody was in a major advantage. And uh, I'd really like to see how Duke, Metatron, and you, the Compassion, actually uh, fare against these guys. They did pretty good. And it's not necessarily, you don't have to necessarily get a win. It's just how much pressure you can put on them and how well you can do. You know, that's what I like to see against these guys. And it gives me a rough idea of uh, where you stand and uh, your technical skills. And I really like it. I really enjoy watching Naru and Helio as well. The way they work and their synergy together is really, really impressive. And as I mentioned, guys, when you enter these tourneys, it's not always necessarily, oh, I'm going to lose, they're in there. They've lost a couple times before against really strong teams. And it's never, you know what I mean? It's And having them in here is also a benefit to us. We're able to see their, build, their builds, what they're running, how they run them, what they use in certain situations when they're getting pressured, how they synergize with each other. It's a lot of good information that we can pull from these. So here we go into game two. I'm very curious to see how well they do. I'm gonna watch uh, you the compassion for this one, actually. He's going in really hard against it. They're already separating quite a bit on this one. It's probably not the smartest move. They kind of want to stay together. He does have his defiance stance, but he was knocked down and CC'd before he can even proc it. Maybe he should have used it a little more preemptive and gone in a little harder. This way he can kind of use the defiance stance and not have to worry about too much damage coming his way. But that's Naru and Heal. You end up taking that one. Good job. Sorry, guys. Next up is Crisis and Valor versus Alex and Control Freak. This should be a really, really good match. I'm excited for this one. Crisis and Valor have entered in a few of my 1v1s together, and I'm sure they do OQ as well. Their burst is really, really good. I'm just letting them know, guys. So Crisis and Valor versus Alex and Control Freak. This is their best of series of uh, three, best of three series. And now... Uh, this is the second round in our quarterfinals so far, guys. And so far, it's going super, super, super smooth. I don't think... I, I didn't even do a roster check. And so far, we're almost through the entire bracket of every single participant. We haven't seen everyone yet, but we're almost done going through everybody. And I haven't had one person who didn't show up. It's really, really good, especially considering there's 26 or 20... 26 participants. 
And that's quite a lot to roster check, and there's quite a lot of people to make sure that are there, and they're all there. And that's just cute. Kudos to the community, and kudos to us constantly doing this every single day. It becomes that rhythm, it becomes that routine. People look forward to them, and they just show up. And they don't even, they, like I said, when I first started these, I would get maybe 14 people signing up and then I'd get maybe eight that show up, you know what I mean? And now I'm getting a 26 that time sign up and I'm getting like another four or five that want to sign up on top of that, you know what I mean? So it's getting really good. The community is starting to get built up, really, really helpful. You get a lot of good people that are out there promoting it as well. You know what I mean? Like Naru and Grimjack always staying really heavy on it, just trying to PvP as much as they can, streaming a lot more often. We got Roy starting to stream a lot more often. Teapot's coming back to stream. He streamed for the AT. So we're getting some good publicity. I even saw Ben was in there giving out some Oreen outfits. There's the, they're even doing a roller beetle competition. They did it today. There's another one tomorrow. And tomorrow, there's going to be a huge Fashion Wars contest run by uh, Winter's Wonder. You guys should definitely check that out. I'm going to be streaming it. So you're going to be able to see it at the same time. And you whisper Winter's Wonder if you want to participate in that. I believe it's over 450 golden prizes with a peerless infusion. So there's a lot of activity going on in NA right now. So I'm super excited about that. Here we go. Crisis Guardian is already trying to go hard on the paint for uh, OG Triple OG. He's doing a good job of trying to mitigate and just trying to be as annoying as possible. Using the ramp to his full advantage. Going up and down trying to create that uh, the obstructions. Especially for Meatwad. Oof, big burst coming out from Meatwad to onto OG. Now, Gip doesn't have too much ability to be able to peel. There's a lot of heavy damage. Ooh, he's keeping the heavy pressure onto uh, Crisis. I believe he has... Let me take a quick look at Crisis over here on this side. He ends up going down from the Condi damage from uh, Gip. And really good sustain by OG. He's pretty much the bait. He kind of just baits them and they try to go for him because they can't catch Gip. And then when he has the availability and when he's a little less pressure, they'll end up turning the pressure up onto Crisis and Meatwad. Really good job by uh, Alex and uh, Gip. Very, very impressive. They play quite a bit together as well. I don't know if they do uh, duos or too often. But you can definitely see some synergy going on over there. I didn't expect Meatwad and uh, Crisis, but they are uh, they are very top tier players. They're good players. And they're able to adjust very well. Not necessarily just their builds, guys. They can adjust their play style, the way they engage and who they engage. Maybe they're going to bait going after Alex and then turn hard onto Gip once he gets too close. And they're able to kind of immobilize him there. But we're going to find out very soon how they're going to approach this next match. I'm very curious to see how it goes. And for those of you who just joined into the uh, Twitch channel, guys, I'll post the bracket for you as well. So you can kind of follow along with me. What's going on here? Perfect. Right, so I'm even happy to see Valon starting to really start to stream Guild Wars 2 a lot more. He did used to do... Oh, sorry, my stream volume is up, guys. I'll turn that down. So here we go into game two, guys. Build didn't go well. <laughs> I had to go back to Hammer. I didn't even take a quick look. Uh, he actually changed his build uh, crisis, I believe. I'm not sure if we saw it. But he was running something different, and now he's gone back. He does like running that, uh, which is going to be very helpful for him to run tactics, especially with the all he's got. He does, he cycles through his resistance really well. I mean, well, we saw it yesterday, I believe, when he was fighting the thief. I think it was Hitzer that he was fighting. I'm not entirely sure, but he cycled through his resistance incredibly well. There was, or it was the, uh, or the uh, fire weaver, I believe, and the Hitzer that he both fought. And he cycled through his condies really well, putting some heavy pressure onto OG. Really good job. And as I mentioned, they, their way, their ability to adjust to their opponents was very, very, very good. Now, Gip is kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place. There's not much he can do in this situation, or they can do in this situation. As there's, oof, big rock throw to the face. I don't know how he managed to get that, but that rock throw has got some, it's got some curve to it, bro. I've seen that rock throw go out and do a 90 degree angle turn and hit me in the face, but wow, there's some magic going on with those rock throws. I'll tell you what. There we go. Now I'd like to see this. this is our second game in our quarterfinals, and we're already going to a game three. This is where they got to really turn up the pressure. Can't get too complacent. OG got hit really hard with some big bursts at the beginning there. And I believe it was uh, those slight changes that Crisis ended up doing. He went with a unique build that he was just trying. Wasn't able to capitalize on it. Went back to something he's a little more comfortable to. 
Let me take a quick look at OG on this side. I don't believe there's any major changes that he's made. No, Hitzer hasn't made any major changes on his side. If there has, you guys let me know. But I don't believe there is. So here we go into game three, guys. This is going to be a good one. Stupid light. I'm curious to see who they engage again and how we're how. OG engages. Is he going to leave the no port spot? Is he going to wait for them to bait a little closer? He ends up kiting, sticking with Gib as much as he can. Gib's going to try to go hard for the engage right quickly onto the core guard, which is pretty going to be pretty difficult. Big damage. He goes immediately into the uh, renewed focus, which is pretty tough. Now he's used a lot. He has not even able to get the uh, refresh on most of his tombs. He couldn't even get through them. Big rampage coming up from Valor. He's going through. Oof. Oof, that was really, really tough. And there's not much that Gib can do in that situation. He's really, really squishy, especially as a Kondi Thief. There's so much pressure coming out around OG. There's no way they're going to be able to peel. So he had no choice but to back out. I mean, Watt and then Crisis end up taking this one. Really good adjustment to their opponents. So it's a 2-1 series. Our next match is going to be a Lighter and Awe of Euphoria versus Red Avenged and Noir. Now, Lighter and Euphoria, I think, are my last. Come on, Light, you're really pissing me off now. Lighter and Euphoria, I believe, are the last of my competitors to be, uh, that are free agents that are going to be fighting in this tournament. So I don't think I have to worry about anyone else after this, which is good news for me, actually. Sorry, guys, this Light is really irritating me. So let me write that down one more time. Lighter and Euphoria versus Red Avenged and Noir. Eh? These are the two that I'm sure that are not might potentially might not be there. So yeah, there's the lighter. And now it's just Euphoria. I do have two uh, free agents waiting in the wind, so it'll be very quick for them to pick them up. I don't think Euphoria is here. Let me take a quick look in here. I'm going to add my two subs in here. So I'm going to ask him if he wants to sub. Okay, Nature, you can go in, sir. You can go into red team for uh, lighter. I believe you're in the Discord with me. There you are. Perfect. So it's Nature Salad and lighter. As this is the first guy that we didn't have in our tournament, so that's unfortunate. But we, like I said, I always try to have at least two or three subs lying in the wind, so we don't waste too much time and we try to get these going really quickly. It used to take me about uh, three hours, three and a half hours to do two v two, and now I'm kind of getting them down to an hour and a half and two hours, and that's just kudos to just me doing them all the time and the community working really well together, not trolly, not being too stupid, going and signing up and going when they sign up. So he's got strength with discipline and spellbreaker. Let me know, tell these guys to ready up when ready. So here we got Strength, Discipline, and Spellbreaker. He's running with Greatsword, Dagger, and Shield with Spoon of the Strength and Demolisher. We got Nature Salad. I believe they run with a Fire Weaver. Yep, Fire Arcane and Weaver. He's running Sword Focus with the uh, Sanctuary and Sage Amulet. Titzer's running on that Condi Thief that we've seen before. Very, very, very dangerous. And we got uh, him running on the, uh, the Nori running on the Classic Prod Hollow. I kind of like the nerfs that they did. It really uh, makes him a little less uh, overpowered. Not overpowered per se, but a little less dominant. So other classes kind of have a little bit of an ability to shine and show what they're made of. Big damage coming out onto the lighter. I'm not even sure if uh, Hitzer was able to get on him. But that was a good target, especially considering he's the warrior who's susceptible to a little bit of Kondi. I'm not sure if he had the uh, resistance of uh, Berserker. Oof, he ends up overheating on that one. Nori might go down really, really, really key over here. Now it's Hitzer versus uh, Nature Salad. He can use him as the abate. He's going to be able to get the res. No, he gets the big stacks of bleeding on top of him and the burning now. 
Hitzer's got to be very, very, very careful. He puts the swirling winds up to mitigate any kind of damage, and this might be going in the favor of uh, of Nature Salad. It's going to be a little hard for him to close the gap on top of him. we got about 55 seconds left in this match. Now we're starting to get into something exciting. These matches are starting to get a little more intense, guys. As we start to get the cream starts to rise up, Hitzer's in a bit of trouble here. It's those burnings that's going to be very dangerous. And Nature Sal does have a lot of Condi clear, but he can't go through it too quickly. He's got to be really careful for the engages. Really good dodge on that engage. That's exactly what you want to do. He's mitigating most of his engages. Really good job by Nature Salad on this one. Hitzer's kind of on the run and gun right now. He doesn't have much of a choice. That was a very dangerous engage. He's able to get some good pressure down, but uh, not enough. Nature Salad has a lot of mitigation. He was not able to put enough pressure onto him. We only have about 15 seconds left in this match. This is going to get dangerous now when it gets into the map mechanic. There is no more healing that's going to be provided to them. And usually around this time, you want to keep an eye on your cooldowns. You want to make sure that your health is pretty topped up. If Hitzer goes into this cooldown, there he goes using his heal right at the last moment. And that's the best option that he can do. Try to not take any damage. Oof, oof, he ends up porting down into the, uh, the AoE. Now, this is also going to be dangerous for Hitzo. There's a lot of ports, and it's a little wild with the uh, Thief just bouncing around everywhere. He's got to be careful he doesn't fall in. As you can see, those Dow dodges and those evade frames can be very tricky to be using on a small little area, but he's doing an exceptional job right now surviving on such low health. Ooh, look at that. Uh, I thought he was going to just coast around that. But he ends up getting down. Really impressive job by Nature Salad. Seeing the little window of opportunity to put the big pressure onto the uh, the Hollow Smith. He ended up getting with a shitload of burns. And then he used the body as bait to put down some more pressure. He hits her, went to go get for the res. But as you know, the uh, Condi Thieves are very, very squishy. So he did the best he could. And in Nature Salad's... Uh, in his benefit, he wasn't able to get that res, and he's just able to drop some heavy cleave onto him, and he just peeled out right away. Really, really good job. Now, Nature's dead. Lighter's got to be a little more careful on this one. He's on the wrong team, actually. Switch sides, let him know. You <laughs> Space Fan Lighter. You hide, my guy? What's going on? Oh yeah, guys, if you just joined in, I finally made a website for Guild Wars 2, uh, my season one. It's called, what is that, what did I call it again? Alex, do you remember? The what? What did I call Your this? thing is like uh, the, uh, something revival. Oh yeah, Code Red. It's called, this uh, season coming up is going to be called Code Red Revival because Guild Wars 2 PvP is in the Code Red. So we're in a little bit. It's like a mountain dude. That's What's what this? I said, dude. <laughs> and I've uh, I used to I did I did put the brackets in the bottom in Twitch and people kind of didn't understand it so I ended up making the website so if you look a little below you'll see Guild Wars 2 League and you'll see the link to it and if there's anything you guys would like to see a little bit of improvements or anything of that nature let me know but it was just something I made to be a little more legitimate you guys can actually go there and watch it and it's something that we can keep just constantly going and going and going and going so I'm really happy about that. And this, we're kind of already in the process of it. I've already done most of the uh, the stats for the top 15 for just the 1v1. And I'm kind of using that as my beta version to kind of figure out how I'm going to do the ranking system, how I'm going to award points, how many people I'm going to put into the, uh, the actual roster that you can see that we're judging on. So it's going to be interesting. So here we go again. This is going to be an interesting match. Lighter's got to be much more careful there. He was able to get burned. There you go, right away, immediately with the nine stacks. He's able to finally clear that on top of him. He's just sitting right there in the big engage. He's got the swirling winds up. He tries to get the uh, he tries to get the mage bane, but he's actually able to get the proc on the rampage. Really good job on him putting heavy pressure onto uh, HB or Noire. He's got to be careful for those condies though. At the same time. He is running with Zerker. He does have the Signet. But there's also a heavy pressure of power damage. He's got the good combination of power and Condi. But now uh, HB is kind of stuck by himself at top. But it's easy for Hitzer to come in, come back and re-engage. The 12 stacks of Condi catches lighter. Really off guard. There's not much he can do in this situation. Nature Salad's in some big trouble. 
Oh my god, is he going to do it again? He just needs some big Akani stacks. Lalito is not able to get res. They're just cleaving it with that pressure. And from a Akani Thief with all that poison, it's almost impossible to get the res down. You're better off trying to get a cleave res. Yes, I think it's, it's a little bit of a sad state. But keep in mind, I've only been doing these for about a month and a week. My first time doing them, or my first week of doing it, I had maybe five viewers. The second week went up to 10, the third week went up to about 15, and it just kept going up and up and up and up, and some days are better than others. Some days are a little more active. Some days I can max out at 60, some days I get only 15 to 20. But it doesn't really matter to me. I enjoy doing the game and I enjoy streaming them. It's to kind of bring content out. And I also kind of like seeing the uh, the progress from people that I've watched from the beginning till now, you know. And there is a difference. I do see a lot more people participating. I see a lot more people coming in. And like I said, there's 26 people that signed up on this one. And I only missed one person. And he's probably somewhere out there. He just didn't really know where the server was because I probably found him in Divinity's Reach. But everything is sign pointing to good signs. You know, we're getting a lot more streamers out there. A lot of the streamers are coming back. Nature's Salad, oh my god. Oh my god, Nature's Salad. I didn't even go, my goodness, guys. Holy moly, I should have been. Wow, that was really impressive by Nature's Salad. Really, really good job. They actually end up taking out uh, Red Avenge and Noire. So that's uh, Lighter and Nature's Salad that end up moving forward. We're going to our last match in the uh, quarterfinals. Then we're going to be moving into the semifinals. This is Space Pen and his partner. I don't know why I put Space Pen and Pen, but it's Myalak and Cardox versus Space Pen and his partner. So I'm going to write that to them. Space Pen team versus Myalak Cardox. And what I also really like is that I know most of these players because I've done these so many times that I've seen a lot of the players. So when I do get free agents, I can, I'm able to put them with a good team. Yeah, Sal is a fucking monster. A really big monster. Okay, hold on, guys. I'll be back in a minute. Damn, Alex, I thought you were plat, dude. No, this is the Inception. Dropped like. Yeah, the gold tubing hero or. Tubing or. Like the last few nights. You still. You still. You still impress me on the amount of gaming you play, though. All right, guys, here we go. Space Pen and his partner, Julie Sophie, CJ Rich versus Myalak and Goblin Slayer. Myalak and Goblin Slayer actually did a really good job in their last match. I was very, very impressed with that. So here we go. Right away, they're focusing hard on Goblin Slayer. Doing a good job of mitigating, getting caught in the shockwave. Big damage. Tries to get the push and the pull. Not able to capitalize on that, but Goblin Slayer is definitely on the run. Big Prime Light Beam coming out from Julie Sophie. He's got to really be careful now. Drops a symbol to try to mitigate some damage or just try to keep some pressure up onto them so they don't get so aggressive onto him. He's got the photon wall up. He's able to explode it, but not at full overheat. He's going for the Elixir S stomp on Goblin Slayer. Really good job by Space Pen and CJ Rich. Really cleaning up well, focusing their target really well. Goblin Slayer did a lot to mitigate that. He had a lot of utility, but at the same time, it was just too much pressure coming out. And they were cycling between each other. One putting pressure, the other cycling pressure, the other cycling pressure. So they always had cooldowns and many more that Goblin Slayer could compensate for. Really good job by Julie and Sophia and uh, Space Fan. And that's how you really want to see 2v2 teams working. Focusing on the right target, peeling the other guy, trying to create that 2v1, cycling through their, their CCs and their big damage so they're not going through everything all at once in case they need to use it to peel or 
to try to put pressure on the other opponent. Really impressive job. My Alex just trying to get away at the situation. There's not much he can do. There is about 35 seconds left in the map mechanic. I think he's running with Rune at the healing signet. Yeah, he's got healing signet, so he's not going to be able to get that big burst. I don't think he's going to survive this. Nope, there's that shockwave. Ended up taking him down. Yeah, that was an impressive performance by Sal in the last round, nonetheless. And that was a really good job by Julie Sophia and Space Pen. I'm curious to see how they do in the semifinal. It's very, very interesting. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Click that follow, click that subscribe if you kind of, if you like this kind of stuff. And like I mentioned, uh, Savic before them, very, very new to shoutcasting. I'm very, very, very new to uh, to Twitch. So even for me to get this uh, 31 or anywhere from the, today, Naru even hosted me as well. I'm getting anywhere from like 30 to 50 people on average. So that's really, really nice for me, especially considering I'm only about a month into uh, streaming and twitching and shoutcasting. So I'm really happy with that. And like I said, there's more and more people that keep showing up every time. On good nights, I average anywhere from like 50 to 70 if it's a really good night. But especially for a new streamer, I'm really content with that. And considering that this NA is pretty dead in PvP, we're trying to bring it back and give it some life. Oof, big prime light beam right to the face. Goblin trial. I'm going to take a look at his cooldowns. He still does have renewed focus. He does have the shield of absorption. But it's just too much pressure coming onto him. As soon as he comes out of this renewed focus, he's going to be cleaved down to the ground. Yeah, as you can see. And that's the thing with Elixir S and renewed focus. You know, it's it gets, it's nice, but at the same time, Elixir S is a little worse. Even with the renewed focus, you can kind of use your shield of wrath before you pop renewed focus. So you can still get some damage while you're in invuln. And at the same time, you are kind of intimidating with a shield of wrath that's invulnerable, ready to proc and blow up for 5 to 7k on top of you. But still very dangerous. If opponents know that uh, renewed focus and they know the animation, they're able to time their burst right at the end of it. So that's Space Pen and uh, CJ Rich that end up taking that. So we're going to be moving into our semi semifinals match. We actually saw this last time in our semifinals. Crisis and Valor versus Naru and Helio. But I think it was Naru and Anya. So this is going to be Valor and Crisis versus uh, Naru and Helio. This is going to be another good match. I'm super excited to see this one. And this is what I mentioned. They're able to test their grid against one of the top tier players, and when they wouldn't necessarily have the advantage or have the ability to be able to do them duel them two v two in a consecutive manner like this. Especially considering that it's recorded, you're able to actually go back and see where you made your mistakes and see where you made your faults, where you can improve, and the next time you can do it again, which is really, really nice. So let's take a quick look at Crisis over here. And they still got that hammer with the Rune of the Fighter, Radiance, Valor, and Zeal, or Virtues, excuse me. Good luck to you, Crisis and uh, Meatwad. I have confidence in your skills. You'll definitely be able to put up a good show, I'm sure of it. And as I mentioned, guys, they allow about two minutes for them to do whatever they so choose. They just have to ready up to start. Both opponents have to ready up on both teams. <laughs> yeah, and that's what the, that's how I kind of use learn. You know what I mean? I go against people that are better than me, or I, you know, I'll fight people that are stronger than me because you you're never gonna get better if you're fighting people that are weaker than you. You know, you're gonna reach a certain plateau and you're gonna kind of think that you're better than you really are. So these kind of guys put you into a place where it's like, okay, now I know where I gotta learn. I know I gotta know where my my weaknesses are, and these are things that I gotta work on. And this is how we're gonna help the community get better and reach like that skill cap goes up and up and up and up with the help of these guys, using them as our as our measuring sticks, if you will. They're trying to bait them into there. I don't know if that's going to work out to their favor. Naru's getting some big heavy damage. Crisis is resustaining quite well as well. Niwad is going really hard into the paint after... Oof, he goes in for the quick rampage. 
I don't think he's going to be able to get that. There's a lot of mitigation coming out from Naru. There's a lot of Kandi as well. I don't know if that worked out to their best advantage, being able to be caught in that little cage like a rat. But we saw this in their other round where they did lose the first round. They were to, able to adjust well. Let's see if they're able to make the adjustment here. And let's see if they change their style or tactic. They did try to lure them in. Oh yeah, guys, there's a big Fashion Wars tomorrow too, run by Winter's Wonder. I'm super excited for that. I'm not going to be doing any 1v1s or 2v2s or any tournament tomorrow. We're just going to be uh, streaming that... Uh, that uh, at Fashion Wars, and also EU is having another Beetle race. It's like I think it's a three-part series or a four-part series, and then next week they're doing the final finale. I think the gold is uh, it's a community-run event, I believe as well. But they use the actual game system to mark all their times. And there's one of these guys. He's like known as the Beetle, the the Beetle Racer Extraordinaire of the EU. He gets the best times, he's super fast, it was pretty entertaining. Seeing how they were able to commentate, and they actually had a couple streamers at different sections of the race, so uh, Roy was able to switch streams and be able to see them as they're passing through from these different stream points, which was really interesting to see. So here we go with game two, Meat Water and Crisis versus Naru and Helio. And they're both going for the same tactic. He ends up missing on the next shot, going in for the heavy, heavy damage. Price is getting right out of there as much as he can, putting up the uh, Litany of Wrath and trying to get some damage to get some healing. He ends up going into the Renewed Focus really quickly. Now this is something that they can take care of. Oof, he goes into the Elixir S as well. This could be a huge advantage over here for the blue team if they're able to capitalize. No, but he's getting a lot of damage. He gets hit with the Prime Light Beam. That's super unfortunate. Naru is really low. And Captain Yar is really low. If he was able to sustain just a little longer, maybe that would have been a different situation. But that was a very impressive performance coming out from Meatwad and Crisis Guardian. Very, 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 very nice to see. Good job, guys. Very close to that. Crisis was able to sustain for maybe a couple more seconds, maybe another five, six seconds. It would have been a different situation. Maybe they would have been able to get it down on Naru or Helio. As you saw, Helio did use his uh, Elixir S. So now we're going to be going to Lighter and Salad versus Space Pen and CJ. Ooh. Yeah, their focus is really incredible. And they're, they got a lot of synergy together. They work well together and they play together very often. So it's very interesting and very uh, it's nice to see that type of synergy and the type of teamwork that comes out from them. Yeah, there you go, uh, Helio saying thank you. Good job, Meatwad. Got me to 1K. He got him really to 1K, and he forced the Elixir S, which is pretty hard to do out of coming out of these two, especially with Naru behind him. He's not down, and he's running his Champion's Winter Crown. Very prestigious. <laughs> we did have our monthly AT. Today was action-packed, like I mentioned, guys. There's EU AT. Finally, we got it back after two mo three months. We got the NA uh, AT. Then we have the 2v2 for NA. Really, really, really good. A lot, of, a lot of action today. I think just in streamers alone, there was over... I think there was over 1,200 people watching just on the uh, four or five different streamers that I saw. Really nice stuff. This is going to be interesting. Let's see if Nature Salad can do this one more time. And Lighter Wear Drive, he uses a lot of different builds. I've seen him use Thief. I've seen him use Hollow. I've seen him use uh, Warrior. So it's really nice to see, especially these type of guys. Swap, wrong swap build. Okay. And there's I like seeing these guys who participate a lot in my tournaments that end up not only always coming back with the same, same, same class. So you're not always expecting the same thing. It's kind of like getting a brand new player when you see them come in a brand new class. You have no idea what to expect, what their skill level is on it, how well they function, what type of build they're running. Let me take a quick look at Space Pen one more time. Honor, Virtues, and Firebrand. Sword, Focus, with Axe, and Shield. He's running Rune of the Traveler with Sage, Amulet. And Julia Sophia is running your classic Hollows Tools build. Let me take a look at this matchup, guys, before I look at the rest of the builds. He got the Swirling Winds up. He did have the uh, Swirling Winds with the Photon Wall. Heavy pressure coming onto the lighter. He's got to be careful. This is going to be a Nature Salad show again. I do not know. He's going to try to go for the res, but I think that's going to be very, very dangerous. Lots of pressure. He's already got six stacks of burns. He's not able to clear them off. 
Oof, he's already really low. Space Ben is low himself at the same time, though. Maybe Nature Salad can resustain and get away from him. I think it's just going to be too much pressure. Space is getting a little low, but at the same time, he's trying to be very aggressive to get the down. So his health isn't naturally, isn't exactly where it's supposed to be. Like I said, he was just trying to get really aggressive to try to put some heavy pressure onto uh, the Nature Salad to get the down. So that's, uh, I'm very curious. See, Space Pen and Julie Sophia. I wanted to see how they do against, uh, if they win this. And we also have a third place match, guys. So keep in mind, we have a third place match. This is only game one versus Space Pen and CJ Rich. Actually, CJ said he wasn't even going to be. I think it was CJ who said he wasn't going to PvP anymore. But here he is today. We're just crawling right back to the PvP arena. Once again, guys, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. You make it more entertaining for me, and I hope I make it more entertaining for you. If you like this type of stuff, I do it every single day. Click that follow, click that subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I just made a Guild Wars uh, 2 season website. So 1v1, 2v2 season website is down below this video. You can see it there. This is going to be a funny third. We're all in a... <laughs> We're all in a party together. Hey, thank you so much for that uh, move. Thank you for the uh, the host, man. Welcome, guys. We're in the semifinals of our 2v2 tournament. This is the last match in our semifinals. Then we're going to be moving over to our uh, third place and then to the finals match. So I think you just came in at the right, right time. It's Space Pen and CJ Rich versus The Lighter and Nature's Salad. Nature's Salad and The Lighter are the free agent team, and Space Pen and Julie Sophie are the... Uh, duo pair that duo quite often together and it's very interesting to see that the lighter and salads got this so they got so far especially considering they're free agents no problem at all axe i did nothing uh, no worries at all man so already juicy free is putting hard pressure onto the lighter as we already saw in the first round they focused him really really quickly nature style just has too much mitigation and for them to waste most of their cooldowns on something that has so much sustain is going to be a waste by the time they're able to finish him Good job by Nature Salad and the Lighter being able to turn the pressure on Julie Sophia. He's trying to use the no port. He gets him in the rampage and actually able to get the down. I don't think Space Pen's able to get that. No, he doesn't. We're actually going into a game three for our finals match in the semifinals. Woo woo. Really happy to see that, guys. This is going to be a good match. Space Pen not able to sustain, obviously, between the, the two of them, just putting on too much pressure. And there's a lot of Connie coming out of Nature Salad. Oof, nature salad. I don't know why you never participated in my 1v1s earlier, man. You're a fucking monster, bro. Holy shit, Space Pen. I mean, nature salad. Really, 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 really strong. He was actually in uh, in the quarterfinals. Nature salad ended up, uh, well, lighter ended up going down. Nature salad actually 2v1 twice, I think, in two separate occasions. He was able to get the win in a 2v1 situation. I record all of these nature salads so you can actually see this, uh, see the video later in my highlights video. And I do this every single day, guys. Tomorrow is actually going to be, uh, I'm not going to be doing an event, but I'm going to be streaming Winter's Wonders, uh, Winter Wonders uh, Fashion Wars. 450 gold and a peerless infusion for first place. I'm very excited to see that. I like Fashion Wars. Some people are very, very, very creative. I've done a few myself. You can see the winners in my highlights video. That some of them are fucking amazing. Right away going to the no port. Nature style is probably the only one who's going to be doing some porting. And he's also up high. So he's going to obstruct a lot of the engage coming out from Meatwad. Right away they're going after for Julie Sophia. Which is a good idea. Because he doesn't have too much in the way of Condi Claire. Let me take a quick look. Nope. He's only running with uh, his uh, healing turret. I believe he might have a cleansing. No, it doesn't even have cleansing on his rifle, so it's going to be very dangerous. As you can see, those four sticks, four stacks of uh, burning are just sitting on top of him. He doesn't want to use the Elixir S right away because that's going to make him become a hard target. They're going to notice that, and these two guys are both very good. So as soon as they see him do go for the Elixir S, they're going to know that, okay, this is our target. He's got no more mitigation or major mitigation. And that's, oof. And at the same time, Julie Sophie is kiting really, really hard and leaving Space Pen to take the majority of the damage. The lighter is getting really low. Nice counter pressure. Ooh, Space Pen ends up going down. Julie Sophie is left by his own. If he's able to get this down on the lighter, oof, this is going to be huge. He has the Elixir S. He does pop the Elixir S for the stomp. Nature Style trying to do everything he can, but there's nothing he can do. 
This is going to be an interesting match. They're both at full health. They both have a relatively decent amount of cooldowns to their availability. Actually, Nature Salad more so than uh, Julie Sophie, but he's got to be careful. Those are the burnings that are going to be dangerous. He just uses healing turret. He has no other source of uh, Condi mitigation aside from maybe his rune, which I believe he's running with resistance. No, rune of the leadership. So it's going to be super, super, oh, it gets him in the big overcharge. There's only 15 seconds left in the map mechanic, and this is where you want to put as much pressure as you can onto the opponent, because when that timer hits, he's not able to heal, so whatever he starts with at that timer is what he's going to be working with for the rest of the duration of the match. There is also an AoE that comes from the outside and one on the center that eventually encroach onto every single area of the map, forcing the duel to an end. Good job by Julie Sophie. He's hanging on by a thread here. He's got to be super careful with the... Oh, big prime light beam. <sighs> that was huge. He's got to be careful for those Gandhi stacks. Ooh, there you go. He did have the Elixir S to his availability, but that was uh, something he should have popped right away as soon as he noticed those six stacks. Those six stacks will chunk your health down. So it's actually Nature Salad and Lighter that move forward into the finals. Very impressive show coming from... Uh, from Lighter and Salad, that's a 2-1 series. Now we're going to have our third place match, which is Crisis and Valor versus Space Pen and CJ Rich. This is our third place match, guys. So Crisis and Valor versus Space Pen. I'm surpri really surprised. Holy moly. Really good job, uh, Nature Salad and Lighter. CJ Rich. I'm getting pretty good at putting the free agents together, if I do say so myself. Crisis and Valor. Okay, they're both in there already. Perfect. Damn, those Kondi. Yeah, and Kisama. Really, really, really strong Kondis. And this is another reason why I like doing these so often, guys. And then some people, when they're participating, they come into the Twitch. So all I have to do is tell them who's fighting or they even follow the brackets themselves. People are really starting to flow with these tournaments and I'm super happy. I'm able to do these 2v2s on the weekdays. Where, well, it's a weekend, mind you. But I'm able to even do the 2v2s on the weekdays without any issues, without any major hiccups, and I'm always getting enough participants. I have 13 2v2 teams. That's 26 people participating in this. And I do tournaments every single day. I do not believe that PvP is dead. We're going to try to revive it, guys. I'm even creating my own Guild Wars 2 uh, 1v1 and 2v2 league. I've created a website. If you look below my stream, you'll be able to see that website there. Thank you for posting the bracket, Enki Sama. I appreciate that. Now they're quickly going into Enki Sama uh, onto a crisis, and again they're using that tactic, of trying to using the no port to bait them to come in. Space Pen and uh, and CJ are going heavy pressure onto crisis, but Mead was doing a great job of peeling. Good job by Space Pen getting that big pull of the shield of absorption to push him away to try to cleave a little more and try to peel a little bit for Julie Sophie. He puts up the uh, projectile hate to mitigate any sort of damage coming out from Meat Water or Crisis. There's not too much projectile coming out from either. Ooh, Crisis Guardian's in a bad way right now. Julie Sophie is really close to him. Meat Water's not able to peel. This doesn't look good for them. Space Pen is getting kind of low, but he's able to back out if he so chooses. He does have the Mage Bane on him, but he's staying close to him, so it doesn't proc. It does proc. I'm not sure what happened there, but he wasn't able to capitalize. Julie Sophie was already on top of him. They end up getting the Stomp on him. Really good job by uh, by Space Pen and uh, Julie Sophie. That's CJ Rich, I believe. Yeah. Really good job by you guys. Impressive performance. Now, there's, in our finals match, it's going to be a best of five series, guys. Our finals is always a best of five. And so 300 gold for this tournament today. We're going to be giving 50% to first place, 30% to second place, and 20% to third place. And these two gentlemen, these two teams right now are currently fighting for third place. Meet Wad and uh, Crisis Guardian versus uh, Julie Sophie and Space Pen. And it's very interesting because these two teams are both teams that uh, have registered together. And one of the teams in the finals is one of the free agent teams that I ended up putting together. Well, I didn't actually put Nature Cell in there. He was just a substitute lying in the wind in case one of my free agents uh, didn't show up. And thankfully, only one of them didn't show up, and Nature was able to take that spot rather quickly. So here we go again. Julie Sophie versus Space Pen and Meat Wad and Crisis Guardian. This should be a good one. I'm really curious to see how uh, Meat Wad and Crisis Guardian have uh, are able to counter from this. They did really good in their first couple matches, considering that they lost the first match and they were able to come back and really uh, dominate the next two matches. They adjusted well, but it's this, this is the third time I've seen them or fourth time I've seen them use this tactic inside the uh, 
inside their 2v2 and it hasn't worked out for them really well. They ended up taking a lot of damage, burning through a lot of cooldowns. Really good jump shot coming out from Julie Sophie. I'm not sure if he entirely connected. Uh, Crisis drops down the line of warding to try to uh, keep the damage away and try to mitigate some of or peel for his opponent. Crisis is in a bad spot. He's in between both of them taking heavy AoE damage. He ends up getting the, uh, I thought he got stunned or not stunned, but he mobilized. Now, it's not so dangerous for Miwad. He can kind of take most of the damage while Crisis tries to kite away. Good port by Crisis using uh, uh, using CJ Rich to get out of there and going down to the second tier. He almost gets on that pull, but he's able to pull off a nice dodge. His heal is coming up, so this is where he's going to want to turn and burn and put all as much pressure as he can. He's not able to do so. Spaceman with some good mitigation. I don't know how much... Uh, oh, he actually ends up going down. This is super dangerous. No. Crisis ends up going down as well, and that's Beast Pace Fan and CJ Rich that ends up taking uh, third place. Really, really, really nice performance. Good job, uh, Space Pen and uh, Julie Sophie. Same with you, Crisis and Miwat. Really, really good job. Every time I see you guys, you get stronger and stronger. Very entertaining. And that's another one of the things I like about doing these guys. Uh, when I first started it, I saw a lot of people that were kind of new, and now that when I see them enter now, that's they're really, really, really strong. The difference is night and day. Kind of watch, like watching your plants grow. Really, really entertaining. So now we have Naru and Helio versus Lighter and Nature Salad. This is going to be a best of five series. Naru Helio versus uh, Nature Salad and Lighter. We're going to take a quick look at their builds really, really fast before they start. This is a best of five series, guys. So this is a Helio. He's running your classic tools hollow. He's actually running with Cleansing and Energy, which is a good job to go with the Cleansing. I don't think he's going to need that Elixir C, considering that Naru is running on his Firebrand. It is, I think it's like a, a hybrid. Rune of the Traveler with Mender. He's got Axe and Shield, Sword and Focus. He's running a Zeal, Honor, and Firebrand. He's running a classic Spellbreaker build, I'm pretty sure, over here. I don't think he's running with Tactics. No, Strength, Discipline, and Spellbreaker. He's running with Great Sword, Dagger, and Shield. Also Rune of the Leadership with Demolisher. And Nature Salad is running your typical Fire Weaver with Sanctuary, Sage Amulet, Sword Focus. He's also got Fire Arcane and Weaver. So really heavy engaged by Nature Salad. He's getting kind of pulled around by Naru. He's really good at that uh, pull, push and pull combo with the uh, the uh, Axe Pull and the Shield of Absorption, as well as going into his Tomb 1 to get that extra little pull. Heavy pressure coming onto to Na Helio now. I think he's already used his Elixir S. Let me just take a quick look. Yeah, Elixir S has been proc. They're both kind of sustaining quite well. Lighter's got to be super careful now. They're taking a lot of damage, and they're a little close together. So as they clump up like that too close, they end up taking a lot of uh, ricochet damage from the other opponents, which can be very, very dangerous, as we saw here. So that's Naru and Helio. That looks like they're going to be taking Game 1. Yep, there you go. Nature Salad ends up going down. Really good job so far. It was not a terrible performance. Let's see how they counter on that. It's going to be difficult. I think. Oof. I think the only way they're going to be really able to do it is kind of like uh, use one of them as bait. So when one of them is kind of low, he kind of chases off and hopefully Captain Yar, who's a little faster than Naru, will be able to separate from Naru. Then they're able to turn and burn and just try to dump as much damage on top of them as much as they can. But I'm not sure if that's going to work. These two are very, very, very strong. I think I took a look at Lighter already. Yeah, and we took a look at Nature Salad already. Sorry, guys. Two silver to throw. <laughs> Nature Salad is bribing Helio with two silver. It's pretty tempting. Oh, I apologize for that crisis. Just whisper me next time and I'll be able to game end so you guys are able to change your builds however you so choose. Just whisper me and let me know. They were actually end up, uh, they were waiting for for the other opponent to stop attacking them so he can get out of combat to change his build in the previous match. But, uh, I wasn't aware, so they weren't able to change. It's unfortunate. Really good job putting some heavy pressure onto Helio. He's got to be careful. Nature Style just trying to train him as much as he can. Lighter already down. Lighter's got to be very careful. He can change his build. He doesn't necessarily have to stay Spellbreaker. He doesn't necessarily have to stay with the weapon set that he has. He can go a little more offensive or defensive, whichever he so chooses. Yeah, that is Helio. Yeah, that's Helio. 
Captain Helio Yar. <laughs> they're both really nice dudes. Really, really nice. As long as you're nice to them, they're nice back to you. Very informative. I highly suggest watching their streams. And I have—I don't know if Helio streams, but I would definitely love to watch him stream. Oh, and if you're also looking for another streamer, I would highly suggest Roy and Grimjack. These two are very, very good streamers. They know a lot about the game. They know a lot about the mechanics, how where you'd be in your positioning, especially as they're playing. They give out a lot of good information, so I highly suggest watching them, guys. And the state of the game, I'm like, I'm pretty happy with all the streamers. During the day, there's a lot of PvE. During the night, there's a lot of PvP. There's just always a lot of streamers. And the more streamers that we have, and the more people out there, the more people are going to notice it. You know, just me alone, I've been very, very new to streaming. I've only been doing it for about a month, a month and a half. And already from just that, I've had at least 10 people who have started playing the game just because they watched it. And they're like, what game is this? I'm like, oh, it's Guild Wars 2, free to play. And next thing you know, they're messaging me in the game saying, hey, I'm here. And I'm like, wow. Wow, you know, it's actually having an impact. And I'm a small streamer, so imagine a larger streamer and how much impact they have on people. So I always try to be PMA and try to make sure it's a positive mental attitude and try not to bash the game too much. You know, it just gives that bad stigma, that bad energy, that bad vibe. So thanks for coming, guys. I really appreciate it. Now we're getting some big damage on him. Ninja Cell are heavy pressuring on him. And Lighter not being able to put any counter pressure. He's just being trained the entire time. He's got to be able to turn and burn and put that big pressure down. He's got to be able to put some fear into their eyes to make sure that they understand that, hey, if you come after me like that, I'm going to turn and burn on you and get some big damage. But Nailator is not able to do any of that. He's just being really trained down. And like I said, I don't watch him. I don't see him too often on, uh, on uh, Warrior. So maybe that's it. He's kind of new to it. It could definitely be one of the things that's ca that's happening here. But really good job from uh, Captain Helio. I'm going to watch uh, Naru for the next match. This is something that uh, I've seen him rerunning in the other 1v1. He actually entered a 1v1 not long ago, and I think it was more to test his build and see test his uh, grit against some of these people. And that's another reason why I try to do these every day, guys, because uh, if I did them only once or twice a week, you'd see a lot of these really tough, 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 tough guys coming in all the time because I only do them so often, so like maybe once or twice a week. But now that the fact that I saturate it so much and I do it every single day, they're not really inclined to do it every day. So they, can, they maybe come to my tournaments maybe once or twice a week, especially more on the weekends when they're the larger ones. And then during the weekdays, you're able to compete with people that are not necessarily the toppest and the highest of tier. There are still some strong players. Is that game three? It's a best of five, but I'll let it go. Best of five series, guys. I believe there's one more match. Unless I am wrong. That was three. Okay, solid official. So that was going to be it. So for those winners, we got Naru and Helio in first place. We got Nature Solid and Lighter in second place. And we got, uh, I believe it's Space Pen and CJ Rich in third place. So we're giving out 300 gold in total. 50% to first, 30% to second, 20% to third. So give me a little bit of time, guys, for those winners, if you do hear me. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you so much to Diesel for the follow, man. I really appreciate that. When you guys click that follow or that subscribe, it really encourages me. And I highly suggest you take a look under my video and see that Guild Wars 2 League. It's a website I've created for our first ever Guild Wars 1 PV or Guild Wars 2 1v1 season. I've called it Code Red Revival because Guild Wars 2 PvP is in the Code Red situation and we're trying to revive it. So it's called Code Red Revival. Our first season is actually in process. It's in the beta beta stages. I'm just kind of using it to figure out how I'm going to do the ranking system, how I'm going to give out points, and things of that nature. So, but I'm going to do these, every single season is going to correlate with the actual ranked season. So as soon as the ranked season starts, my 1v1 season will start, and it will end at the same time. So at the end of the season, first, second, and third will be getting gold. First place will get somewhere around 1,000 gold. Second place will get somewhere around 500 gold. And third place will get somewhere around 250 gold for ending the season in first, second, and third place. There are a little bit of things that I have to go through and make sure that uh, I hash out and hammer out to make sure that when the official season does start, we don't get any, uh, any little fucked up issues or anything that really gets out of control. So I'm probably going to end my stream here, guys. I really want to appreciate or thank you guys for coming out and watching these. I do these every single day. So take a look at my highlights videos. You'll see it ever since I started about a month and a half, a month and a week ago. 
I keep thank you so much for that. Helio he said, keep it up. You're welcome, man. I really appreciate you guys coming out and supporting me. I really, really do, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And all you guys who came out to watch, man, you guys are fucking awesome. Every single day, I get more and more viewers, more and more people are seeing it, more and more people are curious. So hopefully we start to bring some momentum to the PvP scene, man. And like I said, I do it every day. So, And I've had Guild Wars 2 host me. I've had Guild Wars 2 uh, devs come into my tournaments to watch. So obviously they're noticing and obviously they're seeing it, which is a really, really good thing for all of us. So, like I said, guys, take a look at my highlights video, click that follow, click that subscribe if you like this kind of stuff, and you can also know when I go live. Tomorrow we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be hosting, not hosting, but streaming for the Fashion Wars contest that's held by Winter's Wonder. I highly suggest you take a look at that, guys. And also, Code Red Revival Season 1 is already in progress. We're starting Season 2 when the next rank season comes. I'm going to be really ready for that. There's going to be a lot of gold involved. And uh, I hope you guys come and uh, enjoy me for these uh, 1v1s and 2v2s. So thank you so much, guys. Have a great fucking night. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me see who I can pass you to. Who can I pass you to? Gladimir? Do you guys want to see Gladimir or Valun? Valun is doing any Paglers. I'm not sure. DD, World v. World, PvP, and random stuff. I guess we'll go to uh, Gladimir. Okay, guys, I'm going to pass you over to Gladimir. So thank you so much for watching, guys. You guys were the fucking awesome, awesome, awesome crowd. Really, really nice. Thank you so much for coming out, guys. I'm going to pass you over to Gladimir. He's doing some World v. World and some PvP stuff. Have a great fucking night. Thank you, thank you, thank you.